Welcome back. Today we're going to finish framing out the entryway, sheath that, and then the guys are going to come and put on a roof for us. So at this point I've finished decking the roof up top so I can turn my attention to the framing of the entryway. Uh, for the decking of the roof it went pretty smoothly. Um, I put felt on the rest of the roof and with the exception of one small leak where the uh, roofs come together, the entire roof is uh, completely waterproof. So it's uh, there were no leaks anywhere else. And I did expect some intrusion where I found it. Uh, I just ended up not worrying about it because we're going to have to cut away that felt uh, at the point where those roofs come together because we're going to be putting down ice and water shield and things like that. So uh, for the framing here below, there's a header uh, for the door. Uh, and that's a 50 inch wide opening, um, 80 inch tall, uh, which is standard. And I made it this wide because we might put a door with side lights. Um, we at least want a 36 inch door. Um, so we're still determining um, the best way that we want to do that and exactly what kind of door we want to put in. And then above that, there's just a, a picture window. Um, so it's going to be about a two foot tall by four foot wide uh, picture window centered above the door, which is what I'm framing that second header for. Uh, and then putting in the studs. Now I'm just going to sheathe uh, the rest of it the way I've done the rest of the house. Uh, this is a, obviously a pretty small section so it goes pretty quickly. Uh, I wanna, still want to make sure everything's level. Uh, I found one of these uh, uh, studs was uh, off kilter. I had nailed it um, on the wrong side of the line so it was actually standing at an angle. Uh, it's something that can happen if you don't mark which side of the line it's supposed to go on and especially when their studs are like 14 foot tall. Uh, so it's a good thing to double check that you don't make that mistake. I found it early and was able to fix it pretty easily. I'm still a big fan of the zip sheathing. It's just easy to work with and when you're building something by yourself like I am, it's very good for doing things in pieces. So you can do like one section of the house, you know, completely tape it off and get it sort of weatherproof and then go to another section of the house and do the same thing as opposed to having to try to use house wrap to do one section at a time, which I think would just be more difficult. But overall, again, just really easy to work with. And as a product, I just, I've, I've, I'm a big fan of it. I can't imagine that I'm gonna ever build anything again um, without using it. So when I'm patching in pieces like this, I don't get too hung up on the measurements. Uh, anything that's hanging over, I can just go back and route down with the router and just hit the all, all the edges. I'll be knocking out the picture window here in a minute doing the same thing. And that's nice just because I have scrap zip uh, sheathing from other sections and other, uh, other parts of the house uh, that I've stacked up and saved uh, for things like this when I ended up need needing small pieces. So I just throw it on and then start routing out uh, the areas that I want and smoothing off the sides. Uh, and then I'll tape the corners and uh, tape all the seams uh, as well. And then we'll be uh, ready to go. Now I need to get one last piece up high on the side. Um, this platform that I built for this tractor just remains incredibly useful. I I've used it 30 times and every time it's been great. Uh, again, it's a, it's a full four by eight sheet of uh, three quarter plywood with a couple of pallets beneath it. Uh, I've got some pretty hefty toe straps on it as well, securing it to the forks so it can't really go anywhere. Uh, you do need to kind of be careful when you're turning in these tight spaces that you don't uh, damage the sheathing, but uh, what a what is just a great solution to get up and work comfortably, uh, you know, in 14, 15 feet off the ground. And you can see where the entryway roof comes back and meets the main roof. Uh, on this side, that corner, that's where I was getting a little bit of the leaking. Uh, because we've had some really heavy rains and the water just rushing down from the main roof uh, got under the, the felt just a little bit. But again, all of that's going to get cut away so that we can put down ice and water shield. So now the guys are here and um, I've hired somebody to put on a steel roof. Uh, this is not something I wanted to attempt to do myself. These guys can do this in a couple of days um, and they, that, this is all they do. So it's a nice way to get the, the finish work done. Um, they actually did my cabin as well, the one that we're currently living in while we're building the house, and they did a great job. So this is actually their second time out to start this roof. Uh, the first time, they came a day earlier than we had originally planned just because of weather, and I had been scheduled to be out of town, so I wasn't here when they started. 
and the owner called me and said, hey, I've got some bad news. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I built this roof. So is there something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Uh, can they not roof it for some reason? And as, as it turns out, when they delivered the steel, the forklifts had damaged the edges of the steel. And it was something that you could see from the ground, like it was significant visible damage. And they didn't notice it until they had had three or four of these sheets on. So the owner said, nope, we're going to take it all down. And they ordered a new batch of steel uh, that was undamaged. Uh, and so this is their second time coming back and starting it. So really appreciate their quality control and, and saying, no, this isn't right. We can't put a new roof on and, and you know, see that it's not perfect. So uh, I, something you would expect somebody to do, but not, not, not everyone uh, takes their jobs as seriously as they should all of the time. We did decide on steel over shingles just because we live in and around so many trees. Uh, there's a lot of wind in this area, and meteorologically, I think we're just in a in a in a channel or a, a jet stream or something around here because we will get a lot of very high winds, thunderstorms. We've had uh, significant tornadoes in the area over the years, um, not annually or anything, but uh, we figured because there's so many trees around that the steel would withstand damage um, from things like flying limbs uh, better than a shingle roof would. But now with the roof on, we'll be putting in the final windows. Uh, we're getting the final round of windows. We had another six or seven come in that I waited on. Uh, and then the entry door and a couple of sliding doors, we're going to get work on those for the next couple of weeks, uh, get those things in. And at that point, we're ready to get electrical. Uh, we have that contracted and so we'll be scheduling that soon, uh, get that done in coordination with the HVAC but we're moving along. Uh, getting this roof on is exciting for us. So this is where I'm at. Thanks for watching. See you next time.